video, I'm going to show you how you can take parts that you've already given a name to, which is saved on, on the desktop, and go rename them uh, according to the, the number scheme that you've applied in the vault. Now, you know, renaming, you can rename files, you know, that aren't sitting in the vault, but, you know, it's not as easy as it is when you, you are just working in the vault. And it also, you know, with the vault, because the database, it keeps the relationships that, that you've got in there between your assemblies, your drawings, you know, any Excel spreadsheets that you, you may be attached to it, ink and, and the parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go place these, uh, these, these drawings, that, these parts that I've created. I'm going to go place them to an assembly, and I'm just going to all put them grounded at, at, at the origin. Place grounded at origin, and you'll see that it now starts to populate the, the assembly with all the, the parts that I've got. So the next thing that you'll see when I, when I put all of these components into the, into the vault is that they've got, um, they've got, uh, I've, I've included something called the data standard onto my, my Autodesk uh, Inventor uh, and my AutoCAD as well. So what this, auto, this, this data standard does is that when I try and put this into the vault, any parts that have not been saved and not got a name, it will rename it if I want to um, with, with the naming scheme that I've created. So if over here I can say, look, iLogic door, and I can say, right, my numbering scheme. So I've got a sequential and I've got an iLogic test. So my iLogic test over there, you see, I've said that this must first have initial value of TS and then three digits afterwards. Now, it's only going to do it for the assembly two, but for the test of T1, C1, all the way down to T4, C5, um, it will not put that in because it has got, <clears throat> it has got uh, you know, it's already been named as well. So I'm going to go and I say, OK. And it's now going to go rename the assembly. You can see it's now TS067. And I'm going to dump all those files into the vault. After it's been put into the vault, I will then go to my Vault Explorer and start the renaming process. So going to my vault over here, We'll see there if I just go and refresh, you'll see there I've got all those tester files that I've got over there. So with these tester files over here, if I select it, I can go and rename. Now with the rename over here, it'll say right, I can add additional files if I want to as well. And from there, you'll see there the numbering scheme I've got it's got TS and it's got a new number over there. Okay, I can go to my numbering scheme and I can say, listen, right, you know, maybe it's a, a different scheme that I want. Okay, iLogic test, apply. Okay, and then you can update the part number, yes or no, as well. And there you can see it will uh, put a tick or untick the box over there. Once I've done that, select finish. And it goes and renames everything for me. And as you see, it's renaming. It's taken from the last number in the vault because my vault is set up that I can't have any duplicate uh, file names. And there we go. So you can see there, I have now renamed it. And if I go into one of the uh, one of the um, the parts over there, you'll see there, I have renamed it. So comment, rename. Okay. So once again, Vault making it very, very quick and easy to be able to go and rename to a naming structure that you've got, especially if maybe you've got a whole lot of parts that you've created in another system that you want to bring in, but rename it to what you are familiar with. Thank you very much for watching.